But that's unfortunately what I see most teams' product backlogs look like. Crusty old cardboard boxes full of miscellaneous, I don't know what it's there, I just want it to go away. There are three artifacts in Scrum, and all three of them help produce transparency. And we keep hearing this word transparency and spec adapts all over the Scrum framework. Let's talk about them. So I would love to talk about the increment, but I want to hold off first because it doesn't make sense to talk about that without first talking about product backlog and sprint backlog. So yeah. gentlemen, let, let's talk. I enjoy teaching the product owner class, uh, the PSPO uh, course, and we get to the product backlog. And I think most people are just eager to jump right into the tool set uh, that they're using for their product backlog management. That's really what they come to class caring about. Uh, but if we approach product backlog from the perspective of what your tool has to offer, I think you may end up having the dilemma of just anything showing up there. Where do your product backlog items come from? Where do these things surface? And the the sources are numerous. It's just it's like a giant electronic junk drawer of concepts, ideas, requirements, and tasks that just build up over time. Uh, that's unfortunate. That is not the intent of the product backlog. The product backlog is guided by something called the product goal in the Scrum framework, and most teams that I have talked to and worked with are missing that commitment. Scrum calls it a commitment. There's a reason for that. Uh, if there's a guide for the product backlog, that might filter what you want to put in your product backlog. I like to use the illustration of um, my storage area in the basement. This year was not a great year for Greg getting his Christmas decorations taken down on the outside of the house and put away. Not a good year for that. I mean, it was still, um, I'm going to admit, February and I still had lights up on the roof. No <laughs> Santa Claus in the front yard. That at least was put away. But we still had some uh, Christmas decorations need to be put away. And I, I went down to the basement, and I have two sections of my storage area. I have the stuff on the right, which have these wrinkly old cardboard boxes. Some of them have a little water stain, and there's no labels on them. I'm terrified what's in those boxes. I'm about ready to take them and just stick them on the curb and put free and hopefully they'll disappear and there's no incriminating things in them that would uh, get me in trouble. But that's unfortunately what I see most teams product backlogs look like. Crusty old cardboard boxes full of miscellaneous, I don't know what it's there, I just want it to go away. On the left side of my storage area, I had clear totes that I bought two years ago and I put labels on them, which made for a brilliant organization system because now I can go down there and say, that's the box that's for my exterior lights. I pull it out and I know exactly what goes in there. Right next to that's another transparent tote with a label on it that happens to say Halloween decorations. I'm not going to pick up that box because that's not its intent. And so if we approach our product backlogs from this perspective of intent and a goal-driven purpose, we might be more critical about what we put in there. Does this support the goal or does it not? So stop looking at your product backlog like a junk drawer or like a crusty old cardboard box, uh, but something that is transparent, that has a purpose and a label or a purpose called the product goal that helps guide what you put inside of it. I think if we can start there, that's going to make a huge difference on how this or how this uh, artifact rather is going to support your team. You can plan against that. Uh, you can inspect and adapt against that. And once you satisfy your product goal, you move on to the next and repeat this process. So there we go. That's my thoughts on the product backlog. Transparent boxes as a product backlog. I like that. If you're watching this and you come to my class, I'm probably going to steal that analogy that Greg just did. Um, all right, well, that falls to me. Then the, the next artifact is the sprint backlog. I think a lot of the problems that you talked about, Greg, with the product backlog exist in sprint backlogs, non-transparency, no alignment with the goal. And so, you know, I could I could basically just copy-paste everything you just said, Greg, about the product backlog and sprint backlog. But here, here's what I'll say. I see a lot of teams get wrapped around the axle about what form the sprint backlog takes, how does it fit into this tool, we're using Jira for our product backlog, so we have to pull it into these sprints, and, and you, uh, nothing against Jira, nothing against any particular tool out there. But the whole point of a sprint backlog is to make the work that we're doing now transparent, right? Product backlog, future work, sprint backlog, current work, increment, done work. So the sprint backlog should help us plan our day-to-day -day activities. I mean, the, the way the Scrum Guide puts it, it should be a highly visible 
real-time picture of what the team is working on. And if if you pull up your sprint backlog and it takes you 15 minutes just to get it to a view where I can see where everybody, what people are working on and, and what our progress is, it's not that level of transparency. I'll sometimes use a graphic of, of boxes and columns, right? Very typical view of a sprint backlog. And the first column says to do, and the second column says doing, and the third column says done. And there's a few items in to do, a few items in doing, and several items in done. And I'll just ask people, there's no words on here. You have no idea what the work is. But if you look at this at a glance and say, this team is on their second day of the sprint. How are they doing? People are like, oh, they're doing pretty good. Great. This team is on the last day of the sprint, and the sprint review is in two hours. How are they doing? Well, there's still some things that haven't been started yet. They might not be doing so great. Now, to be fair, there's no goal there, which is how we should be measuring the sprint and, and how we're supposed to be using the sprint backlog. So th that analogy breaks down a little bit, but what I'm, the point I'm driving at is that it needs to be that transparent. I should be able to look at a glance and, and just get a view of how are we doing so we can talk about, all right, how do we need to adapt? And yes, the goal should be part of that and the individual tasks should be part of that. And whatever structures you're using should be part of that. But I just see a lot of teams that are struggling with some kind of very cumbersome view of what they're working on this sprint. And I'd love to say, just throw that away and try whiteboards, uh, a whiteboard with sticky notes or, or something just lo-fi. Like I'd much rather see a team create a mural board or a Trello board or something just ephemeral that we're just gonna use this day to day and then at the end of the sprint, the sprint backlog is destroyed anyway. Everything goes back to the product backlog that hasn't been done. Everything that has been done is an increment. And so I'd rather see a team have a very useful, low fidelity, low tech, ephemeral sprint backlog than get wrapped around the axle with this tool that they barely know how to use. So if, if the tool that you're using isn't supporting you for your sprint backlog, consider just using something simple that you can use to make your work transparent while you fix those tool problems. That would be my advice about the sprint backlog. Fix your tool problems. Fix the tool problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me pick up there. So the increment is ultimately the thing we make after we've had a product backlog, which has been distilled into a sprint backlog, and you did all the work, and you accomplished a goal from that sprint backlog, and now we have an increment. And that's a really fancy word for the new version of your product. How can we think of this uh, increment? Like, where do we see this uh, in the wild? I always kind of refer to operating systems, and if you check your latest version of whatever Windows or That's Mac uh, that you're on, it, it's going to say something like, I don't know, on a Mac, I think it's like 10 point something. Actually, what are we on, 15 point? If you're so on my 10, Mac is you got on, issues. <laughs> I'm on, my Mac is up to date. Don't tease me. Four, 14 okay. point something. Yeah, 14.4.1 yeah. is the increment Ooh, that I'm on. I guess I got issues. And 14.4.2 is an incremental update on top of that, which is right. everything we had before plus the new features. Yeah. And that's that's really the idea of an increment. It's, it's the enhanced product that has the new things on top of the old things. All right, so we know what an increment is. Great, but why is it important? So in uh, Scrum, the idea is that every single sprint, we produce something of value that is done, tested, complete. It, it needs no more work to be done to consider this usable and being able to hand this off to your customer. And you got to know who your customer is for this increment to make sense. So let's say the customer is somebody who pays our bills. They literally come to our e-commerce site and buy our product or they buy our services or whatever it is. It's directly the customer. If they wouldn't pay for this or if it's not something that changes their life in any meaningful way, it's probably not an increment. If it's not safe, if it's not tested, if it's not well documented or you know all those things, it is likely not a done increment. And so we have this commitment called the definition of done, which is a clear way to describe the state of the increment so that we know it is complete, usable, safe, and done. Um, and it, I swear this is the hardest part of Scrum. Nobody yeah. gets this right. And here's the, the kicker. It is the point of Scrum. Like if you do nothing else <laughs> in Scrum whatsoever, but you have a done increment, I'm happy. If you do everything else in Scrum, but don't have a done increment, I'm going to be frowning. I'm going to be seriously probably shedding a tear for that increment that never happened. Think about that. Like the whole point of Scrum is done increments and having them every single sprint reliably. Like I, I get pretty fired up about this subject, but um, I, I just want to leave it at that. The whole point of Scrum is the done increment. We have a product backlog and a sprint backlog that help us to create those done increments. And those done increments must be reviewed by your stakeholders so we can get feedback and we can pivot quickly if uh, it turns out our done increments on the wrong track.
So there you have it. We got three, three of the big artifacts in the Scrum framework. Mm -hmm. Mic drop. Hey, thanks for watching that video. Did you like what you heard? If so, you're gonna love our Scrum classes. See, not only do we talk about these ideas on YouTube, we're also professional Scrum trainers and we'd love to have you in one of our classes. So if you need to level up as a Scrum master or a product owner, maybe you need to learn how to scale Scrum or combine Kanban or UX with Scrum, click the link in our description and you'll find a list of our upcoming classes. If you like this video, just leave us a comment. If you got some positive feedback, we'd love to hear it. And if you've got some negative feedback, well, we'd love to hear that too.